and it tells you Marion. The first name they bring up is Marion, not Aaron. Amen. So Aaron saw that his sister was leprous, and Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, wherein we have sinned. So Aaron quickly went to his brother to, so his brother could what? Intercede on the behalf of what? His sister. Not what? On the behalf of who? His sister. Amen? Because his sister needed to be healed. Healed for what? From her sin. She had to be removed from the camp for seven days. Shut up. Amen? For seven days. And then Miriam had to stay there. Amen? Until she was healed and brought back again among the people of God and see this is what we need to understand prophets amen have a unique ministry just like an apostle they have a unique ministry if people don't understand another person's gift or another person's role as leadership and as being an apostle or being a prophet and you begin to put your mouth on them you're going to be punished especially when they are serving God I mean really serving God touch not my anointed do my prophet no harm amen so we have to be very careful not to allow this cord to rise up in the church and there's a lot of discord rising up in the church and God will punish and I'm not gonna say how he's going to punish it's not my place to say how he's going to punish but i know he will punish amen because god said i will hold those in judgment that's on the outside of the church and we as a church will judge those who are in the church who are doing things inappropriately in the house of god that is our responsibility but it's so unfortunate that there's so much disunity in the church and because of the disunity the devil has found a foothold to come into the church and cause strife and discord among God's people amen praise God so we need to be careful not to allow these things to continue on in the church continue on outside the church it's one of the things that I, I recall when I used to go to um, a particular church a lot of people that was not attending church knew everything what was going on in our church like we would have church meetings we'll talk about the funding monies that uh needed to be paid and people who were family members of the church will go back out and share it with other family members that had nothing to do with the business in the first place and then these non-believers these non-church going family members or friends or acquaintances will start putting their mouth on the leadership of the church amen and it's a shame when we bring other people into the house of God amen and don't speak positively about the good things that's going on in the church and keep stuff out of the out of the world but it's unfortunate we have people that goes out into the world and slander and gossip about their leadership and 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 it makes us look bad amen and it really does it makes us look bad it makes me look bad amen so if any of you have done that repent ask God to forgive you for your sin amen for slandering backbiting gossiping you know blasting in the name of God repent quickly amen ask father God to forgive you of that sin amen you don't want to be uh, going to hell for that for that type of sin or any other sin amen it says right here in Hebrews Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 it says looking diligently lest any man fell of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled and that's what's going on today there's so much bitterness in the church amen and it's not it's, the church is 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 the people it's the church is a foundation amen i'm not talking about the building or the cathedral i'm not talking about that i'm talking about god's people how if we don't repent or seek god and trust god and 
do right amen and stop putting our mouths on the leadership the word of god strictly tells us that we are to pray for our leaders we are to intercede for those who are in leadership amen not to do what Marion and Aaron did go start slandering the man of God because he married an Ethiopian amen not start talking about well who, who, who is Moses huh God don't just talk to Moses he talked to us too don't he how come we don't have a say about this and God had to bring them in order don't you recognize leadership you two are not in a position where I put Moses. How dare you put your mouth on the man that I have chose to deliver Israel out of Egypt, out of the snare, the traps of the enemy. Who are you? So God had to set an example. And that example was Miriam because Miriam was the one doing all the talking. Amen. Praise God. But the word of God tells us that we could get defiled by the root of bitterness. Amen. So, so we just said in a prayer earlier in Matthew chapter 15 verse 13. That anything that was not planted by my heavenly father. He will root it up. So I pray now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That father God will root up the bitterness in your life right now. He will root it up root up the bitterness in your life so that trouble will not spring up in your life amen so that you will not be defiled amen in the mighty name of jesus your time has come amen shout jesus amen praise god your time has come root up the bitterness out of your heart amen don't let anybody's behavior or lifestyle cause you to become defiled amen cause you to have trouble in your life amen praise god and it continues to say in verse 16 least there be any fornicator or profane person as esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright for you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sold it carefully with tears amen and that's a key thing don't give up your position in the kingdom of god don't don't do it don't allow yourself to have discord and strife with people not just people in the world but people of god god's people our brothers and sisters in christ amen don't allow this to happen to you don't miss your inheritance don't miss your blessing amen don't get rejected out of the kingdom of God. Just like Esau. Esau, he gave up his birthright for a morsel of meat. He gave it up for food. And many of us are giving up our right to the kingdom of God because of our slandering spirit. If you have a slandering spirit, if you are slandering people, if you are backbiting and, and gossiping and doing stuff that is contrary to the will of God, repent in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask God to forgive you. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now, God, that you will hear my voice, Lord. Father God, if I have done these things in your sight, Father God, I repent. I ask you to forgive me, Father God, and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness and purify me with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Forgive me, Father God, for slandering, backbiting. Forgive me, Father God, for gossiping. Forgive me, Father God, for blasphemy. In the name of Jesus, I renounce all powers of darkness. And I pray, Father God, that you will root up the spirit of bitterness out of my life. So it will not spring up trouble in my life, Father God. Nor will it defile me, Father God. Because I'm cleansed with the blood of your son, Jesus. Amen. God is good. God is faithful and just. And that's why it's so important to know who you are in Christ. And not to have yourself validated based upon what somebody else say that person could be lying you don't know if that person is really sincere about the things they're saying about you look at mirror mirror was talking about her brother about the greatness and the goodness he did and everything like that but then when he got married her whole heart and everything changed her attitude changed amen and i'm telling you people of god if you continue to walk contrary to the will of god you are gonna need deliverance Amen. 
Deliverance is going to be needed. Amen. Because you are planting obstacles in your life. When you're not repenting, when you're not renouncing, you're going to start having obstacles, unnecessary obstacles in your life because of your sinful behavior, because of your conversations that you're having. Amen. And when this happens, it brings a lot of discord. It brings a lot of strife in our lives. Amen. And it causes us not to live holy. Because the word of God tells us in, in uh, Hebrews 12. That if we don't get rid of the bitterness in our lives. It brings forth trouble. Amen. And it defiles us. So if you're walking around with bitterness in your life. And you say oh I love my Jesus. I love my God. But you have allowed, to, you have allowed bitterness to root up in you. <laughs> But guess what? You're not holy. And you can't live a life of holiness. Amen. Praise God. So that's why it's so important to repent and renounce and break those strongholds. Break the strong man in your life. Renounce the works of darkness. Amen. And start believing God to be your deliverer. To be your help. Amen. Praise God. And if you continue to have this bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart. Continue to slander leadership. Then you're going to get sick. Just like Miriam. You know. This leprosy that came upon her. Was because of what she said. And a lot of people in the body of Christ. Are sick. They don't know why they're sick. Because they know oh I live life good. I'm healthy. I pray. I do this. But behind closed doors. They got bitterness and unforgiveness in their heart. Towards other people. Not just leadership of the church. I use that as an example. But it's not just leadership. It's overall. You know, I, I go into certain ministries and I can look at a person and, and see how their attitude is. I can discern in my spirit. This person is dealing with unforgiveness. Amen. And when a person comes into the body of Christ and they're dealing with unforgiveness. And they, they have released a person who they haven't forgiven. They cause a lot of havoc. Because discord is in their heart. So when they speak... Where are they speaking? They're speaking discord. They're speaking strife. They're breaking up the church because they are still the victim. And they're not looking at, oh, how did I become the victim? You know, one of the things that's about deliverance is being honest. Be honest and be truthful. Most of all to God. God the Father, you know, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Be truthful. Go to God and repent. Acknowledge your sin before the Father. Amen. But don't let sickness come into your life. Because you're refusing to obey the will of God. Stop refusing to obey God's will. Because you will be kicked out. Amen. Out of a lot of churches. And there's a lot of people who are being kicked out. Out of a lot of churches. Because they're not obeying God's will. When things don't go their way, they start dismantling everything in the church, slandering the ministry, the, the choir, whatever they could put their mouth on because they have unforgiveness in their heart and they have bitterness. And these things need to be rooted up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something. A lot of sickness does come from unforgiveness. It's transmitted sickness into your body unforgiveness is promotes a person to commit suicide amen praise god and I, let me tell you something let me make this very clear unforgiveness is a dangerous spirit you know unforgiveness is a dangerous spirit it opens the door to a lot of hostility in the lives of people amen and god is not pleased with that so i recommend to you today and every day, every hour, every second, every minute, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Don't let, don't let unforgiveness cause you to give your life away to the devil and go commit suicide. Amen. Don't, don't commit suicide. Amen. You may not do it physically, but you're sure doing it spiritually. Spiritually and mentally, you're committing suicide. And that's a sin, my people. So don't allow disunity in your hearts. Don't allow bitterness to root up and cause trouble in your life. Lots of troubles. Amen. 
and cause you to be defiled. In Jesus' name.